Dear friends, today we celebrate the Sunday of the Word of God. Pope Francis institutes the third Sunday in ordinary time to be celebrated as the Sunday of the Word of God, a day to be devoted to the appreciation, celebration, study, and to pray with the Word of God. Let us, during this Eucharistic celebration, pray that Jesus opens our minds and hearts to understand scriptures and experience the power and richness hidden in them. May our daily encounter with the Word of God bring us more closer to God and fill us with His infinite blessings. This Mass is offered for the soul of Kashmir de Silva and it's a month's mind Mass of Annie Parakatel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Today, my dear friends, as said in the introduction, we celebrate the Sunday of the Word of God. Earlier, Maybe four or five years back before 2019, we celebrated Bible Sunday in Archdiocese. But Pope Francis, with the closing of the special Jubilee year of mercy, instituted what we now have, Sunday of the Word of God, simply to remind us of the importance of the Word of God, to understand it, to study it, to read it, and most importantly, to pray with the Word of God. And so to be Christian, and not read the word of God is impossible. So let us pray, each one of us, that all of us truly makes the daily reading of the word of God part of our life. 
Today, my dear friends, we are blessed to have our minister of the word. Our parish is blessed indeed, as the whole archdiocese says it, that our parish is one of those parishes where the word, the minister of the word, are very, very active. I'll just read some of the things that they do in our parish. Every Sunday, the adult faith formation session, the Bible marathon that we have, Bible quizzes for the JFC, Bible study classes, Touch by the Lord, VBJ Vacation Bible Joy, the Lenten sessions, especially in our, all our zones, involvement, each one of them in different ways in the JFC confirmation and in our other groups. So we thank the Lord for our minister of the word and we pray for them in a special way as they recommission themselves. Every year they have it and today we will have that recommissioning. And as we begin this Eucharist, my dear friends, let us pause and ask ourselves just as one question. Do I read God's word daily? I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us glorify and thank God for giving us the Bible, His Word. Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be. Spirit in 
the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray that we make the Word of God part of our daily lives. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading, Jonah is missioned to Nineveh. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put out a sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Our response to God's word shall be, O Lord, make me know your ways. Can you repeat? O Lord, make me know your ways. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Our response, O oh Lord, make, make me know, know your ways. ways. Remember your compassion, O oh Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me, because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Our response, O Lord, Lord, make make me me know know your ways. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in the right judgment. To the humble he teaches his ways. Our response, O Lord, Lord, make make me me know know your your ways. ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live like those that have none. And those who mourn as though they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy, as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world, as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Kindly arise. Hallelujah, 
The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now passing along the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with a hired servant, and they followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends, just imagine that you have got this latest gadget. Never seen it before. No one in the neighborhood has it. It's brand new and the latest model of it, a drone, but the latest model. But you see the cover, fantastic. You take out the drone. But how do you use it? How do you use it? Nobody knows. So what you need is a manual and then you go to the manual, okay, on your mobile or wherever. And say, oh, so simple. And then you show your husband, your wife or your son and daughter. See? Okay. Without the manual, lovely drone can keep it in your showcase. But with the manual, it makes all the difference. And that's exactly the place of the Word of God. You've got your life. How do I live my life? I don't know. Let's check the manual. And the manual is the Bible. And therefore the Christian who does not read the Bible is like the drone that's kept in a showcase. We don't know how to use it. And then you use it. Okay. Let's use it as a toy. Kick it around the earth. Let's play, tossing it around. Let's keep it as a showpiece in the, in the showcase. But that's not what drones are meant for. They're not meant to be a football. They're not meant to be a showpiece. They're meant to be what drones are meant to do. And that's what you are meant to be. And therefore, unless you read the word of God, how do you know how to live that life of yours? Now, there are three points I want to make with the word of God, dealing with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. First of all, the Father. The Father has given us this manual, not just for scripture scholars, no, because it's meant for everybody. The Word of God is given for the people of God, so it's not just for scripture scholars. The only reason why scripture scholars have it is because they are also part of the people of God, not because of anything else. And they do their job to help us to understand it, but remember, First and foremost, the Word of God is for you. I remember many years back when I was studying my, in the seminary in Pune, someone told me, you know, I don't remember who, but I was Brother Jara then. Brother, you must be studying the whole Bible. Now I said, yeah. And he said, the full Bible. I said, yeah. And he said, 
And the way the person was asking, uh, speaking, I realized there was something wrong over here. And I said, what do you mean full Bible? He said, you know, we get this Bible, but your Bible must be a bigger Bible, no? I said, no, it's the same word of God for the people of God. So we don't study anything else but the same word of God. So that's the first point. The Father wants you to have his manual. Second point. If I ask you, where do you find out about Jesus in the Bible? Where do you find out about Jesus in the Bible? Tell me fast. Come on. Anybody? Where? Yeah. Okay. Gospels is the perfect place. But the whole Bible tells us about Jesus. This is not my words. This is what the fathers of the church have said. And therefore, those wonderful words of Saint Jerome, ignorance to the Bible is ignorance to Jesus. Saint Teresa of the child Jesus, she said, the way she grew in spirituality was simply by reading God's word. So that's the second thing. If you want to know Jesus, and our whole life as Christians, believe me, our whole life as Christians is only to fall in love with Jesus, to know Him, to love Him, and then when you're in love with anybody, what do you want to do next? How can I help you? How can I help you? Do you live Christianity automatically? So first is to know, how do you get to know? To read in the God, God's Word and praying about it. So Father has given us the Word of God. The whole Word of God is telling us about Jesus. And third is the Spirit. Vatican II tells us that the Bible must be read in the spirit in which it is written. If I take the Bible and say, oh, lovely book of history, which it is. Or I might say, wow, what classical language, which it is. Wow, I can learn English over here, which many people have. But that's not what the Bible is meant for. The Bible is meant to give you God's word. So if you read a history book, which many people do, and have found out many things of history through the Bible alone, fantastic, but that's not the aim. If you want to learn English and read classical literature, many universities give us the Bible as one of the books to read. But that's not what the Bible is meant for. The Bible is to give you the Spirit of God. And therefore reading it to understand it. And interestingly enough, the last, one of the last things that Jesus did on earth was simply conducting a Bible study. Do you know that? Jesus conducted a Bible study. Two disciples were walking down to Emmaus. Then they were rather lost. Their whole life had now, whoosh, Jesus is dead, nothing is left. And in that disappointment moment, they have given up. These years that they have been with Jesus have gone to waste. They are going back home. Given up, defeated, lost. And Jesus says, come, come, come. Let's have a Bible study. And then this text says, and he, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he opened the word to them and revealed all about him. And they said, wow! So Jesus gave them the spirit. But then it goes on saying, and I think this is important, they say, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened the scriptures to us? They read it, okay. But now that spirit that burning spirit was given through Jesus, the spirit of Jesus. So important to read God's word, but as important to read it in the spirit. So always whenever we read God's word, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to understand God's word. And so my dear friends, I end with reminding you one thing and then a way of reading God's word. There's something I've been saying I don't know, maybe a thousand times over here, this time, but last time we had even put it up over here for many years. On our website it was, stickers were given to you, magnets were given to you. Something about reading God's word. Anybody remembers it? Yeah. Anyone? Everyone a Bible, every day a chapter. Gone are the days when we say we have our family Bible. Good. You may have your family Bible, but now your own personal Bible. And I suggest a hard copy. You may have a soft copy, which is very good. I have my soft copy in my, on my mobile. 
but have a hard copy where you can underline it, circle it, put all your bookmarks possible, write whatever you want in it. So everyone a Bible. See that you have your own personal Bible. Tomorrow the sisters will be selling Bibles. If you want one, we can always get one for you. Everyone a Bible and every day a chapter. And how to read God's Word? I give you the POP method. P-O-P. POP. What? POP. Okay. So what is the POP method? The POP method is first pray. Because remember, it must be read in the spirit in which it is written. Otherwise, you're just reading, nice, I can live a good life now. Christianity is not living about a good life. It's building a relationship with Jesus. Living in a good life comes automatically. Automatically. When you fall in love, automatically you love. You do good things. So, always start with a prayer. It can be just a short prayer because the attitude is more important. Come, Holy Spirit. And believing now that the Spirit is there. P, that's P, pray. O, open God's word and read. Why I say open God's word? Because just the opening of God's word itself, the Spirit might guide you to open maybe the Old Testament or the New Testament or wherever. St. Francis of Assisi, his one way of praying was he just opened and read as the Spirit led. Find your own method, the daily readings, randomly open or follow a pattern, whichever way. But open God's word and read. Now keep reading until one word pops up for you. And that's why I call it the pop method. A word will warm your heart. So when you're reading maybe whatever it is, the Lord is my shepherd, a lovely Psalm 23. Maybe at the very first line, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, you read it, nice. But there's nothing I shall want. want. Pop. You actually feel a little warmed. And then you carry on reading till whatever you have decided to read. But nothing I shall want. That is God's word for you. It's warmed your heart. Now, the last P. Pray over that word and connect it with your day. Yes, Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, with you as my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. You know, Lord, our situation right now at home. You know, Lord, my daughter has to have this, this education of hers and the, the fee is so high. How will I manage, Lord? But with you, with me, Lord, everything will go on perfectly well. Truly, Lord, you are my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Finished. You have connected the word of God to your daily life. And believe me, every day you do it, you will find there is something for you every day in the word of God. Because... The Bible is the most popular book you can ever have. P-O-P. P for? Pray. O for? Open and read. And P for? Pray at the end, connecting it with your day. God bless you. We now have the commissioning of our minister of the word. Requesting the minister of the word as I take their names to come on the altar and stand near the railings. Anastasia Ribello, Angela de Souza, Cheryl de Almeida, Gracie Alva, Helen Farrow, Irma Raymond, Juliet de Souza. Josna Cardoza, Koda, Lawrence D'Souza, Montwin DeCosta, Philip Dias, Philomena Fernandez, Rita Lobo, Rupa Fernandez, Sabina Dias, Teresa Fernandez, Valentina Gorino, and myself, Agnello Dias. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask God our Father to bless these, your servants, our ministers of the word, who have studied for two years in the seminary, who want to be recommissioned for the ministry of the word. Let us pray that they may be faithful to the work entrusted to them of conducting Bible study 
in the Bible cells of our parish and all the other works they do to make people know God's word and so give glory to our Father in heaven. Let us pray for them in silence as they pray. Lord God, source of all goodness and light, you sent your only Son, the word of life, to reveal to humankind the saving plan of your love. Bless these, our brothers and sisters, who want to be recommissioned for the ministry of the word. Grant that they may imitate constantly, they may meditate constantly on your word, they may grow in its wisdom and faithfully proclaim it to your people in our parish. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I request our minister over to turn around facing you all, the congregation. Let's give them a big clap. Thank you so much, dear Minister Word, for bringing us God's Word, for your daily meditating on it and then giving it to our people. God bless you. You may now go back to your places. We shall have the creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. Resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Believing in the word of God, let us now place our petitions before the Lord, saying your responses. Lord, give us your light and unite us in love. All together, Lord, give us your light and unite us in love. Believe in the word of God. Let us now place our petition before the Lord, saying, Response, Lord, give us your light and unite us in love. For our clergy ministers of the world, the catechism, teachers and others, that inspired and encouraged by Jesus, they may labor zealously to become the bearer of the word of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord give us your light, your light and, and unite, unite us in, in love. love, that we may become devotee to the word of God, for it whole and certain, our relationship with God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord give, give us your light and unite us, us in, in love. For all the Christians in the world, that setting aside all differences, they may leave as members of one body, bound together in Jesus the light. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord give us your light, light and, and unite, unite us in, in love. love. That our country may remain a sovereign, socialized, secular, democratic republic, and we may follow Christ through the value of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, us give us a light, light and unite us, us in love. love. Pray for community and personal needs. Your response, we, Lord, Lord, give us, us your light and unite, and unite us, us in love. love. Lord, give, giver of all good things, help us all to realize that it is in you who are the light and who lamp, and it is you who lighten our darkness. Keep us united in your love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and the good of his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them out to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Now we have the preface. It's a little long, twice or thrice the size of the regular, but we'll go through creation, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one whole God, living and true, existing before all ages, before creation, and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good and the source of life have made all that is creation, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings. You created us because you love us, and bring joy to many of them by the glory of our light. And so with all the angels and saints who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, you glorify you without ceasing. And so with them we praise you as we sing. Hosanna in the high. Come on, everyone. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is the Lord. Blessed, blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord, blessed, blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Together, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest, holy is the Lord. And now the Old Testament. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care. So that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. And then how we failed, as given in the Old Testament. Time and time again you offer them covenants. And through the prophets you taught them to look forward to salvation. And now the New Testament, the birth of Jesus. 
and carries on. And so you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, Savior, Christmas Day. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor He proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart He brought joy. To accomplish your plan, He gave Himself up to death, and rising from the dead, He destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Him, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings. May they become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the, when he, the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread and blessed and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O oh Lord, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of death. He proclaim, we proclaim his resurrection and ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church. And grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our bishops, and all the order of bishops and all the clergy, those who take part in the sacrifice, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into your heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Apostles and Saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Jesus, with Jesus, in Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father is very fond of us, and so in full confidence we pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, live us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every form of evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy alone, we may be always free from sin and safe from all useless anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. Let us offer each other sign of peace. You. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold Jesus, God's word for us today. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy enter my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to the fullness of life. Amen.
Grant we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gifts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The notices. Notices for the week, Sunday, 21st January, 2024. Friday, 26th Jan, being Republic Day, flag hoisting will be held immediately after the 6.45 a.m. Mass. We will have a special Mass at 7 p.m., followed by a party for married couples on Feb 10th in order to celebrate World Marriage Day. Do register for the same outside the church today or with your SCC coordinators. You are reminded that our women's cell is organizing Samman, an event to honor and impact empower our maids and house help on 26 Jan at 4 p.m. in Ashankur. Do register at the parish office. The Pauline sisters will be selling Bible and religious books outside the church tomorrow. We sincerely thank you for our last weekend collection of rupees one lakh seven thousand three hundred and ten. Do join in for a cup of fellowship tea immediately after the morning masses. Mass intention twenty third Jan seven thirty AM Mans Wine Mass of Ubretta Ubret Francis. 27th, 7 p.m., first that anniversary mass 
of Alice D'Souza, 28th Jan, 9 a.m., first death anniversary mass of Robert D'Souza. Today, actually, there are three things we are celebrating. Sunday of the Word of God, Christian Unity Octave, and also Vocation Sunday. So, right now we have a young brother, junior father, uh, uh, junior brother Richard from Meghalaya, who will share for two, two, two to three minutes his own personal vocation story. Welcome, brother Richard. He's here at Vanilla doing his studies. In the light of the Vocation Sunday, which is tomorrow, I would like to share very briefly how I joined the Jesuits and what inspired me to become a Jesuit. I am Richard Karpuri, a Jesuit uh, junior here in Vinayalaya. My native place is Meghalaya. But I belong to the Kohima region, which uh, comprises of five northeastern states, Nagaland, Manipur, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and Meghalaya. In fact, we are not limited only to our own regions or provinces. We belong to the Universal Society of Jesus. I joined as a candidate in 2018 after my 10th standard. While, I, while a candidate, I did my junior college. I officially joined the Jesuits in 2021. It was during those three years as a candidate that I became, you know, more attracted to the Jesuit way of life. Another reason is the numerous apostolates that the Jesuits do as service in the church. As I look back, I also remember the experiences of being trusted by our formators in various ways which, uh, which increased the sense of freedom to live my life. The formators which I have encountered have been very supportive to me in difficult times. Um, you know, I had to face doubts and uncertainties when my, when my dad met with an accident. But uh, these formators, which, um, you know, they helped me see how God was at work even in that painful experiences. And I believe God is gracious and therefore my dad is uh, gradually recovering. And uh, you know, I give my attribute as well to my family members who have been a great support to me over these years. Lastly, um, I should not forget to mention that I have enjoyed, you know, living together with my companions from different places, who come from different places. And we have a lot of differences, but, but there is beauty in living together. So. Uh, this is my vocation story. In brief, I request um, all of you to pray for all the brothers here in Vinayalaya and others as well. And do pray and encourage for young boys and girls to, you know, experience this religious life. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Richard. If anyone wants to know more about his Jesuit story, you may invite yourself for dinner at Venalaya and ask brother to share with you. Anyone who would like to join to be a priest, religious, or brother, sister, can get in touch with us or the sisters around over here. It's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful vocation. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And have a wonderful Sunday with your family. Same to you, Father.